right before we jump into this Nikon D500's user's guide, if you haven't signed up for the Fronos Photo email list, just look for this orange box over on the website, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I will send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. Dot com, and this is a user's guide of the Nikon D500. So what I want to do is run you through what all the buttons mean and how I also set up the camera, as well as show you some of the tips and tricks that I use to make this camera more functional when you are out and about shooting. So some of this may seem a little basic, but it will get more advanced as we move along. So first things first, let's talk about where the battery goes and how this works. Right here on the bottom, Battery door flips open. You have the Nikon ENEL15, which is the same battery that they've been using for almost the last five or six years for most cameras. That pops in just one way right here. Just move that orange or yellow tab to the side. Boom, you hear the click, shut the door, and you are ready to go with your battery. Always remember to charge it up before you go out and pick up an extra battery if you're gonna be traveling because it's good to have two batteries just in case something happens to one or you shoot a lot of photos or videos. How do we turn it on, which is next? You have the on off right here, boom, it's now on. If you pull it back over this way, it lights up the screen with a nice green light and it also lights up the back of the buttons. That's something that this camera does that many cameras don't do. So that's gonna help you in low light situations or when you're in darkness, it's gonna light up the button so you can still see what they say. So right here, we've got a, an exposure compensation button. We have the ISO button, which is new up top, very similar to the Nikon D5. This is what you're gonna press to go ahead and change the ISO on the screen. It's also easy while it's up at your face, just like this, to hit the ISO button and then turn this back dial right here at the same time you're pressing is going to change the ISO. So what else do we have? We've got the record button. When you are in video mode, you go ahead and you hit the record button to start and the record button to stop your video. You have a dial right here at the front of the camera, which is for your index finger. This is for changing your aperture. And then the one on the back that I already talked about is for changing your shutter speed unless you are pushing a button like ISO. Then when you rotate it, it's going to control the ISO. As we go around the top of the camera, let's go, well, this is your LCD screen. This is where you're going to have uh, your top LCD, where you're going to see all the different things that your camera is telling you you have, how it's set, and all of the things like that. This is your hot shoe. This is where you're going to put a flash. I also store, say, a GoPro there if I'm going to be doing a first-person shooter camera type video. Or I could also put in there a, a microphone, like something like a road shotgun microphone can go right here. As you move over to the side, if you're somebody who's, who wears glasses, when you shoot, you have a diopter to help you see uh, better when it's in focus. The diopter is something that's easy and important to do. You basically just pull it out and you turn it while you're looking through the camera while it's in focus, and that's gonna give you the diopter settings that you want. Boom, you do that right here. And around the top, you've got your mode button. That's for changing from manual to shutter priority, aperture priority, or program mode. You also have your metering mode button right here. You would press this button, and if you wanna change anything, you hold down the button, say, with your left hand, and you rotate the back dial with your right hand, and that's gonna change those different modes. Up here is your quality button. This is how you get into RAW. That's generally the first thing that I do. You can see right there, it is set to RAW. Boom. And then you've got your white balance button, which is right there. Now you may notice this black button right here, this is so you can control this dial. Right now it's set to S, which is for single shot. That means every time you press the button, you're gonna get one picture, boom. And then if you go to CL, that's continuous low, which is a lower frame rate for multiple frames because this does 10 frames a second. But in CL, I believe it's set to five at the forefront. And then in continuous high, that's what CH stands for. When you lock in, you hold it down, you get 10 frames a second, and that's what you get in that. That's great for sports modes. Then if you continue, you have quiet mode, it's supposed to be quiet, it's not really quiet. Then you've got quiet continuous, which lets you shoot multiple frames. Then you have a timer mode, in case you set it up on a tripod and you wanna let it count down from two seconds, five seconds, 10 seconds, or 30 seconds. It could also continuously shoot after say, two seconds take one photo, or after two seconds end up taking 10 photos. It can do something like that. And then you have mirror lockup as well. So if you wanna know what this is right here, this button, 
you close down this. That's for long exposures. It closes the, closes the shade in the viewfinder so that it doesn't let any stray light get in and you just go ahead and do that. So that is the top of the camera. And then you have these other buttons, like this is a depth of field preview. I personally do not use that at all. You have a function one button. This is programmable that you can set it to anything that you want. And then on this side of the camera, you have your AF, which is your autofocus modes. So if you switched it like this, it would go into manual. But when you're right here in AF, you would press this to change from AF continuous, AF single, and AF auto. That's something we'll talk about when we get further into the camera. And then this right here is how you take the lens on and off. But I'm gonna turn this way to do that because this is how I like to do it. I go ahead and I press this button and turn the camera away from me and the camera comes, the, the lens comes off. We've got this white dot right here and we've got this white dot right here. You line up the white dots and then you turn it towards you until you hear the click and that's how you take the lens on and off. This is where you would find the flash if this camera had a flash, but it doesn't. So if you're looking for the flash, the camera doesn't have a flash built in. You have a bracketing button right here. You also have these sync ports. And then if you move this, you have this port right here. And this one right here is for using a remote control. It's not something that you're gonna use terribly too often, but you have that option right there. You also have a hole right here and a hole right here, and those are for your microphones, and that's where you are gonna get the audio when you are shooting video. So we come around the side of the camera. You can see this port right here is for your USB 3.0 port. Then this one is for your microphone, and then this one's for your headphones. And as we go down lower, this is for your HDMI out. So that you could plug into a TV or an external recorder like an Atomos. And as we come back to the back of the camera, this is where you will find your pull out touch screen. This is a 3.2 inch LCD touch screen that pulls out and rotate. It doesn't rotate around, but it can go like this. It can go like this, but it stays in here most of the time, just like that. Menu button, lock button, zoom in, zoom out, okay, another function button that they added to the back. This is your playback button, so you can play back the photos. This is your trash can for deleting the photos. You have a jog dial right here for moving your focusing points. You have a back AF on button. That's so you can use back button focus if you would like. You have your up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, BA, select start button. This is basically your D-pad so that you can move around your menu. You can cycle through images. The center button becomes your OK button. You also have an info button right here next to an I button. Not sure what the two differences are, but they do control two different things. Then you have live view. This would be so you would switch this to right there that's the camera for camera live view if you wanted to hold the camera that way and you would hit live view button like that and it would open up uh, to set you in live view for still photos and then if you switch down to here this is going to hit live view for video so that's what you get into for that now we're going to show you where the cards go right here on the side just press let it pop open. I have in there right now an XQD card from Lexar that goes right here. And then the secondary card slot is an SD card. So if, you going, if you're going to do jobs, I highly suggest that you put two cards in the camera at all time. You can only put the cards in one way. There's a little diagram right there showing you how to do it. Then you go ahead and put the door like this, close it up, and you're good to go. You've got your tripod socket, and then right here is where you would plug in the vertical grip if you had the extra grip, which is something that comes separately. I personally have it. That's why the rubber piece isn't there on the bottom right now. So that is pretty much a rundown of the outside of the camera. Now it's time to go ahead and take a look at the menu system so I can tell you how I set up the menu for when I am out there shooting. Hey there guys, wanted to cut in here real quick to say if you want to unlock the power of your camera and your potential as a photographer, I created the perfect guide for you. It's the Fronos Photo Guide to Getting Out of Auto. It's a three hour long video that's going to help you unlock the power of your camera and understand everything you need to know about the exposure triangle and more along with composition to get fantastic photos. So go ahead and check a free preview out over at fronosphoto.com guide. 
So here we are in the menu section of the Nikon D500, but before we jump into this, I want to let you know that this plug you see right here through the HDMI is plugged into what's called an Atomos. That is how you're able to see the screen that I am working on right now. That's how we are doing that type of recording. So in the menu section, I have it set to how I personally use the Nikon D500. So you can use this as a recommended starting point for where you could set your camera right when you pull it out of the box. Now, if there's something in the camera that you're not sure what it is, go ahead and pull out the user's manual because it's a good option to have just to see if there's some more information that you need to learn. But let me show you something right here in the camera real quick. There's a question mark on the back of the camera. If you are highlighted on something and you see a question mark in the bottom left corner, like this right here on the screen, you can go ahead and hit the question mark and you basically have an explanation and definition of whatever it is that you're on. So in essence, you have a user's manual built right in. Now remember when I said you have a touch screen right here? Now this would be a great time to go ahead and touch the screen and change your settings, right? No, wrong. It's actually deactivated for this, so you have to use this jog dial to move up and down and left and right to find the menu settings that you want to change. So I'm going to go here, and one of the things that I always change is the playback display option. Right here I've got on there focus point, none, highlights, RGB, I leave off for the RGB histogram, and I have shooting data. As you scroll down, I also have on the overview. Now what does this all mean? Let me show you a photo right here. You can see as I cycle through by hitting up or down, up or down is going to allow you to cycle through the different display options, and I love being able to see this information on the back of the camera so I can see how I shot it or the settings that I'm on or take a look at my histogram, which is right there, and also to see a clean image right here. Now how do you change images if you want to see the image that you shot prior or after? You can use the left arrow or the right arrow or now that it's a touch screen, you can just go ahead and swipe through whichever way that you want, or you could double tap, which is gonna start the zoom, or you can pinch to zoom just like you're used to doing with your phone. Or if you go this way even further when you pinch, you can pinch like you're closing and it will bring up an even larger display, well, smaller display of your images, but then you can go through and say, oh, I want that one, and I go ahead and I click it. So that's awesome. The touchscreen for this is absolutely incredible. So we go back into the menu mode. I have image review off. A lot of people like to have image review on, which means when you take a photo, the image automatically pops up on the back of the screen. I like having it off because it's, it becomes a distraction because I got this, I have the LCD lighting up my eyeball now, making it harder to see through the viewfinder. So I personally turn that off. Uh, after delete, this is stuff that I skip right by. Auto image rotation. Well, what does this mean? Question mark, record camera orientation when taking photos or photographs, image taken when off is selected, will not be rotated for display during playback. I personally have image rotation set to on so that when I go back and preview my images like this, it's filling up the whole part of the screen. If I was to have it off when shooting, it would only fill up vertically and give me black bars on the left and the right. I have rotate tall, which is off, but what does that mean? If on a selected image taken with on selection, auto image rotation, if the playback menu will be oriented for display during playback, images are not rotated for, okay. I have this off, I want it rotated inside the computer when I do that. So now we move over into the photo shooting menu. Photo bank A, I leave that. Extended photo menu banks is on. That's because it will give me more menus to select Personally, I want that on. Storage folder, I, I leave that where it's at. File naming, I switched it to fro. You can see that I named it FRO. And then you can go in there and change the file name if you really wanted. You can also use the touch screen to go ahead and change that as well. So I'm gonna go back into the menu. We've got the primary slot selection. I have it go to XQD. Secondary slot function, this means if you have two cards in there, do you want it to overflow, meaning you fill up card one and then it overflows into card two? Do you want it to do backup, which is what I personally use when I have two cards in the camera? That means whatever it shoots on card one, it's saving the card two, just in case you ever have an issue, you have everything saved in two places, or RAW for primary and JPEG for secondary, meaning if you want to save all your RAWs to the XQD, but save JPEGs over to the SD, you can do that. I highly recommend you do the backup option because even if you're going to shoot RAW plus JPEG, you can then get all of the same car. Uh, you're getting a backup of everything. That's more important than anything else. Image area selection. Well, right now, this is a DX camera, so you leave it to DX. Image quality. This is where you're going to go to change 
from, I tried touching the screen again, doesn't let me do that. You can set Nef raw, which is raw plus JPEG fine. I personally leave it set to raw only and I don't shoot JPEGs. Image size, I have it set to large for JPEGs and for raw, I have it set to the largest raw. Now if you still want to shoot raw but have a smaller file size, as you, as you can see, you can go to raw medium and raw small. I'm a big proponent of shooting at the highest quality possible. You can always go down in quality, but you can't go back up if you recorded it at the lowest quality. So now we're gonna go back here. We've got Nef raw recording. I have raw compression off. Now if you wanna get the 200 frames a second continuous in raw shooting, you would then go ahead and put that on lossless compressed. It's still raw and it's still compressing it, but it's still the raw file. I personally leave it on uncompressed myself and I'm not gonna outrun the buffer of this camera. 14-bit RAW, that's the highest quality data that you could get where, there with the images, so that's why I do that. ISO sensitivity settings, I personally change that with the ISO button on the top of the camera. White balance, generally leave it on auto unless you are locking in to something where you don't want the white balance to change at all, you can go in there and set that. Your picture styles, remember that if you're shooting RAW, your picture styles will not be affected it will not be saved inside the raw file for images. But if you're gonna shoot video, your picture style is affecting how your video is going to be shot. Uh, I personally leave it in standard and bump that up just a little bit myself to see some of the, you can see that my clarity is pumped up one and that's really about it. That's just so I get a good representation on the back of the screen at how, oops, I don't wanna change it. <laughs> then I go ahead and hit the OK button to come back in there. Manage picture controls, color space, sRGB is what I use. Active delighting is off. Long exposure noise reduction is also off. Most of these things right here are only affected the, in the JPEG and not the raw file. Uh, multiple exposure, I have that currently off right now. Interval time shooting is off as well. Like I said, refer to your manual or go ahead and use the question mark button. As you can see on this one, it wouldn't come on, but on this one, the question mark would come on to explain what this section is. It's great to have a built-in user's manual. Like I said, I'm just giving you the basic starting point for how I set the camera. So now we're into the movie shooting menu. You have your own dedicated menu just for movies. Uh, I have file naming Fro, also destination. Gonna save it to the XQD card. You can see that I have currently four hours and zero minutes and 36 seconds available in the mode that I'm set in right now. Choose Im image area is DX, currently set to 1080, 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames. You do have the option though to shoot at 4K, which is 3840 by 2160 at 24 frames, 25 frames, or 30 frames. But what I want you to know is when you're in 4K, this camera is gonna crop the sensor just a little bit more by 1.5X. So you already have a 1.5 crop factor built into a DX camera. On top of that, when you shoot 4K, you have another 1.5 crop factor. So you will multiply your lens by 1.5 and then 1.5 again to get your effective um, focal length. ISO sensitivity settings, this is pretty cool for video because you can set maximum. Auto ISO control, auto ISO control is really cool for video because it will smoothly make the transition so you can set your settings and then the ISO will fluctuate and change perfectly to keep your exposure where it should be. That is awesome for video. I don't use that for still photos. White balance, you can set that to custom or whatever you would like. You even have a set picture style just for video yourself. So they have the picture style for photos and also a picture style for videos. High ISO noise reduction, I leave that off. Flicker reduction on auto, microphone sensitivity. I like to set that to manual. You can make all the changes right here. If you want it louder, you can see that you just hit the up button and you can see right there as it changes. Boom, I'm gonna make it peak. Let's see, peak, yep, peaking in the red, you don't want that. You want it to come back to right around the 12 and that is a good place to have your audio set right there. Go ahead and hit the OK button, and then we come back here. Frequency, I leave on wide. I do not like the vocal range. It doesn't sound good in my opinion. Wind noise reduction, I leave that off as well. Now here's a main part of the custom setting menu. You have your autofocus. Uh, AF priority selection, I leave it to release. Uh, then you can see how I have this set as well. Focus tracking lock on, I'm not really set there. I have it set to manual. You can make more changes with this camera than you ever could before with any of the autofocus modes. You can fine tune it more based off of what this says. Just play around with this yourself to see if that works for you. Hitting the center button is the okay button to come back. 3D face detection, you can have that. I have it set to off. 
3D tracking area is set to normal. Number of focus points set to 55. This you can always, you can change to 15 or 55. I like having 55 myself. Store orientation, I'm not even sure what that means. Choose separate focus points and or AF area modes for a vertical or horizontal orientations. Not sure what that means anyway. Uh, AF acti activation is on. Limit area mode, you can change that. Auto focus mode restrictions, I have off. Focus point wraparound, I have on, meaning if you keep hitting left, the focus point will shift to the left, and then if you keep hitting left, it will start back over on the right. You can turn that off. I like that it goes around and changes as well. Focus point options, Manu oh, you really need to just play around with these settings. There's a lot of information here, but I just want to give you the basic overview. Um, what else do I have in here that I've made some changes to? not fine-tune optimal exposure, standby timer, that's a good thing to have. You can, ch you can change that, you can see four seconds, wow, no limit to the standby timer, that's incredible. You can change that self timer, this is where you're gonna go if you wanna do 10 seconds, like I said earlier, number of shots, I could have it say one to nine shots if I wanted it to take multiple shots in intervals of a half a second. Really cool function to have monitor off delay for playback, you get 10 seconds, meaning if you have the preview up for 10 seconds, it will shut off after 10 seconds. In this case for menus, I have it set to one minute. Info displays, you can see all of that stuff right there. Oh yeah, live view, we have it set to infinity, meaning if live view is on, it is not gonna turn off until you run out of battery or you turn it off. We like having that set to, to infinity right there. Continuous low, I mentioned that earlier, you can change that to be nine frames, anywhere from two to nine frames, or one to nine frames actually, 10 being the highest that you can get when you get into the other continuous high. Maximum continuous release is set to 200. ISO display I currently have off. Um, rest of this stuff. File number sequence I leave on, meaning if you take 300 pictures now, and then you take more pictures with the next time you go out and shoot, it's gonna continue the file number sequence up to 9,999 before it resets it back to zero. Um, that's just something that it does. Viewfinder grid display, if you wanna see the grid display inside your viewfinder to help you with composition, you can turn that on. I personally leave that off. Um, you can get your different flash modes, Custom control, custom control assignment. Wow, there's so many different buttons here that you can control. That PV button, you can change it to be whatever you want it to be. Same thing with all these other ones. It's very self-explanatory right on the top of the screen. It gives you a demonstration of which button it is. Very easy to go through and set that up yourself. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna hit menu again. Let's get back into controls. Multi-selection center button. It's actually preset to the zoom in function, which I absolutely love. Uh, let's get into movie modes. You can see custom control assignment and things like that. Moving on, setup menu, format menu card, memory card. This is where you're gonna go if you wanna reformat a card. It's gonna prompt you and say, do you wanna do this? Well, right now I don't wanna do it. Only reformat, what I personally do is I put in a fresh card, I'm gonna go ahead and reformat it before I start shooting. Then you wanna make sure that you offload the images to a computer and have them backed up somewhere before you reformat the card because if you reformat it, it's gonna be hard to get the images back. Language, you can change the language right there to whatever language you wanna read. Uh, time zone, this is where you're gonna go ahead and set your times, your date, your date format and everything along those lines. Monitor brightness, I like to leave it set to zero. Some people like to change it based off the situation they're in, but I like to have it in a uniform place so I have a good representation of the screen or of the image on the back of the screen. Monitor color balance is awesome. You can change that and tweak that. Vertical horizon, or sorry, not the band, but virtual horizon is something that you can change as well. Information display is on auto. AF fine tune is another place that you can go. If you feel that you're back focused or missing, you can fine tune your lenses to the camera that you're using. Um, you can set non-CPU lenses. Those are the older lenses for Nikon that do not autofocus. You can actually have it set so that it will meter. It won't ever autofocus, but it will set the meter for you. Clean image sensor is something that you go into if you want to have the image sensor automatically clean. What it does is it shakes itself up and gets the dust off if you ever see dust on the final image. Now, if you see dust when you're looking through the viewfinder and you're like, oh, I see a speck. Well, that will never affect your image. That's probably on the mirror inside the camera. You don't want to go ahead and get rid of that. Image comment, I have set on. Copyright information, I need to set on. That means that whenever I take a picture, the image comment, which usually has my name and you know Jared Poland Fronos photo, will be embedded in the EXIF data every time I take a picture. Beeping, I have it set to one. 
You can change it to two, you can change it to three. I like to hear it when I'm in, uh, in single focus mode. That's what I do, is that's just so I can hear the focus beep. And touch controls are currently on. That's the touch screen, but you can't use it right now for the menu system. Location data, you can set that. Um, airplane mode, wow, it's like a phone. You got airplane mode, it's gonna turn some things off. Moving through, Wi-Fi buttons, then you have where your battery grip goes. Uh, you can see different information, battery order, battery info. Right now I have 72% left with only uh, 14 shots taken on this personal charge. Slot empty release, this is something that I leave on lock. That means if I do not have a card in the camera, it will not shoot a picture. As we go forward, you have your save load settings. This means if you have multiple D500s, you set up one of them, and then you can save the settings that you did, save it to the card, pop it into the other camera, load the settings, and you have the same exact settings. The only recommendation that I have there is that you change the file names so they do not match. So I would have fro and then maybe fry, just because it's something different. Uh, this is where you can reset everything in your menus. This is where you have your firmware. You can see that this is 1.00 or 2.013, or both of those, whatever that means. Um, moving back into the retouching menu, I personally don't retouch in the camera, so I'm gonna skip past that. And then you go down to my menu, which is where I set personal things that I wanna get to quicker. That's what the my menu is. It's the things that you wanna get to faster without having to go all the way through the camera. So that pretty much runs us through the entire menu system. So here we're looking at the info display on the back of your camera. Now there's a lot of really good information that you can see right here. You can see that we're in manual mode right there on the left hand side. As I turn this back dial, you can see the shutter speed is changing. And as I turn the front dial, you can see that the aperture is changing. Below there you have your ISO. You can see the metering mode that you're set on. You can see that you're in DX. 10 seconds for the timer. You're in SD for your picture style. Auto white balance. You can see this this uh, bubble popped up right there. That is telling me that I have the image comment on. You can see what focus modes you're on. You're set to raw large. The, that's good, that's raw large, not raw plus JPEG large, that's raw large and it's going to the XQD card. And you can see how many shots I have left. Now something I wanna show you how you can change is up here on the front of the camera on the left hand side, you press that in to change your focus modes. Currently we are in AFS, which is single focus, which is what you use when you're shooting subjects that aren't going to move and you can lock the focus in on them. As you rotate your front finger on the dial, you can do group area focus and or you could do single focus. That's denoted there by that checkerboard. Now, if we want to change into continuous focus, which is what you use for fast moving subjects, or when you want the focus to go continuously, you turn the back dial to AFC, and the front dial, as you can see, as you go through, you can have 25 points, 72 point, 153 point, 3D tracking, which is great for something like cars or airplanes flying. That means the camera is going to automatically track the subject and pick where it thinks it should focus. I personally like to select my own focus point. I generally stay on 25 or on the group area, which is the checkerboard looking one right there. So that is the info screen on the back of the camera. So here we are in live view as it pertains to shooting video. That is more important than shooting in live view for still images. I personally don't shoot in live view when it comes to still images. I like to look through the back of the camera. Now where live view could come in handy shooting stills is with a screen like this, you could tilt it down and then end up holding it above your head and that could come in handy. That's one of the only times that I would use live view when it comes to shooting stills. But as you can see, we are set here to shoot some video. In in order to hit record, to start recording everything, we would hit this red button right here, which is your record button. But what we see on the screen right now is that we're in manual mode. We are in AF single focus, and it will do face priority to find their face. You can see that it's in 1.5x crop mode. So remember I mentioned that earlier, that is 1.5x on top of the 1.5x DX. We've got 29 minutes and 59 seconds in the 4K recording, and it's going to the XQD card, as you can see right there. And you have all of your settings down here at the bottom of the screen. Now you can see right here, we've got this off button. What that means is that's your touch AF is off. We can now touch the screen. Touch AF is now on, so if I go ahead and touch it, 
it's going to focus where I want it to focus. Now, this camera does let you do autofocus. It's not the greatest, and I'll show you how to do that in a second, but doesn't it look a little dark? It does. I wanna go ahead and change into that auto ISO for video, which is smooth and awesome. I go ahead and I hit the ISO button up top right here, and as you see, as I rotate the back, it's changing the ISO up. Now, it's gonna leave it set, but I want it to auto. So how do we change it? Well, I have to hold down the ISO button with this thumb and then turn the front, and you can see that it now says auto ISO. So as I make a change, it goes ahead and you can watch the ISO moving. See that? See how the ISO is automatically moving, but my exposure is still set to 1 50th of a second at 2.8. So here we go, I can touch right here to do touch AF, or if we wanna zoom in, I go ahead and hit the magnifying glass, to help me focus. I know it's gonna be a little shaky, so I'm gonna pull back and make it a little wider so it's less shaky. I'm zooming in. I can hold down the AF button on the back, AF on, to help with focus, and then hit the opposite of the magnifying glass to get us back here. Now, if you wanna do autofocus, you would hold that autofocus button on the left-hand side, rotate this to AFF, which is basically autofocus follow. It's gonna automatically do it. You can see that it's shifting as we zoom in. It's gonna go ahead and find the focus slowly. It's not the greatest in the world, but it is an option that you have. Uh, so you have that right there. Now that's for AFA, and if you hold the focus button again on the left-hand side and turn the front dial, you can see you can go from wide focus area to normal all the way to whatever the heck that targeted thing means. I'm not even sure what that means. I should refer to the manual. Oh, I can hit that and I can move it around. So that is something that it tells you right there. Okay, I can manually move it. So then if I hold that again and I get into AFS, you can see that you have face priority, that if somebody's face was there, it would track their face um, wide and normal as well. Now if you hit the info button back here, it will cycle through to show you nothing on the screen, to show you your grid lines, to show you a histogram, to show you this thing. It's like an aeroplane, it's like I find it to be a game, you gotta line it up. This is your virtual horizon, not your vertical horizon. And that's telling us when it's green that it's straight. It even gives you the 3D space showing you if you tilt up or down or left or right. So I hit the info button again, it gets us back to where we started. Now you also have this I button back here. When you hit the I button, it gives you more functions like changing. These are good to know because I couldn't find it the first time. I'm like, oh, I'm just messing around and I finally found it. This is for your headphones. You can change your headphone volume. I hit the I again, get me back into here. You can see all of the different settings. This is basically a quick key to get to frame and size, microphone sensitivity, frequency response, wind noise reduction, destination, monitor brightness, all of these other things are right there waiting for you on the back of the camera. So in 4K mode, I want you to remember that you only get, well, you get 29 minutes and 59 seconds of continuous recording, which is really good, but it is turning on that 1.5x crop mode on top of the 1.5x crop mode. Just keep that in mind. So that basically right there is the live view as it pertains to shooting video. So that pretty much is your user's guide for the Nikon D500. Now I know I went through that pretty quick and I glossed over certain things, but the whole point is that I just wanted to give you a great starting point so that you can get to shooting your camera as quickly as possible. Like I said before, if you need more information, you can head over to my website. There's a ton of different information on all things about capturing images, but for this particular camera model, please refer to your user's manual for more information or use the question mark button that is there. And that is where we're going to leave it. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya. Have you subscribed here on YouTube yet? Well, if you haven't, go ahead and hit the subscribe button right here so that you can be notified when I put a new video live. But if you're looking to build your online presence, I created a free two and a half hour guide that you can download right now over at fronosphoto.com slash branding. Go over there because I created the Fronos Photo Guide to Building Your Online Presence and it's absolutely free for you right now.